Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mechanical Motivator. In this video, we will be seeing problems on forces acting on the reciprocating parts of an engine. So here we will be already, the, the, what are the forces which are acting on IC engine we discussed in a earlier video. So we have derived, I mean we have got 4 to 5 formulas and we are just going to use all those formulas for solving the problem. The formulas are already derived or already got in the previous video. So the here the crank and the connecting rod of the piston is having a speed of uh, n is equal to 1800 rpm and uh, we have the n value right. So we can easily calculate the omega angular speed. Omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. So we'll be getting a value. Next is uh, the crank radius. That is crank is 50 mm. So r is equal to 50 mm convert into meter and connecting rod length is 200 mm. So l is equal to 200. So just convert everything into meter. Uh, next. The diameter of the piston, the diameter of the piston is 80 mm, so capital D 80 mm convert into meter and next is mass of the reciprocating part is 1 kg. So MR, MR is equal to 1 kg. So next is at a point during the power stroke, the pressure on the piston is 0.7 Newton millimeter square. So 0.7 Newton per millimeter square. So when it has moved to 10 mm from the inner dead center, so displacement value is 10 mm. So they have given everything in mm. So first a problem is uh, here we are not having the angle. So basically we need to have a graphical uh, representation in order to calculate theta value. So what all data we need to calculate is determine is first thing is net load on the gajoin pin. So net load on the gajoin pin. Second is stress in the connecting rod. And third is reaction between the piston and cylinder. Fourth is engine speed at which our values will become zero. One by one we will be seeing. So we are having x value. So before starting it, just, uh, just have a graphical diagram. Just keep a point and take the radius as 50 mm. So convert everything into centimeter and scale, whichever is convenient, just keep as it is. I'm just uh, will be uh, telling how to draw the diagram. For 50 mm, take the radius and draw a circle. And then, so if the crank is at this particular point, the P will be at the P1 point. That is, it will be at here. So here the distance is 200 mm. So when the crank C, CO is the crank, when the C point C comes to C1, automatically this point goes here. So we know the distance 50 mm. So for 5 cm. So uh, take uh, 20 cm. So scale down for 1 is to 10 so that it will be very easy for you. So just for 20 cm, draw a line and keep, uh, keep the point here. So now, for displacement is 10 mm, so 1 centimeter, right? So for 1 centimeter, keep your point P. So from here, uh, just have the rear, I mean, distance as 20 centimeter, cut an arc here. So you'll be getting a point C and just join the crank and cr join the crank and measure the angle. You'll be getting an angle as uh, 33, I think so. Uh, 33 degree. You'll be getting a value 30, 33 degree. We can also calculate analytically also. So I will be telling just uh, do for graphical representation. First thing we need to calculate is net load on the gajoin pin. So first calculate load on the piston. So FL is equal to pi by 4 d square into P. Diameter you know, piston pressure, pressure you know, substitute the value and calculate in terms of Newton. Uh, in here, here they have calculated, I mean substituted as uh, millimeter result. So because uh, pressure is in millimeter, so substitute the diameter in millimeter and get the value. So next we know the ratio of length of connecting rod and crank. That is n is the uh, connecting rod length divided by crank radius. So you'll be getting a value. So next is inertia force. So formula is mass of the reciprocating part into acceleration of the piston. So you know the formula. Substitute all the value. You'll be giving. You will be getting the uh, getting the value with the help of the calculator. Next, we need to calculate the net load on the piston. The net load is nothing but piston effort. The net load on the gajoin pin is nothing but piston effort. So formula is FL minus FI. Minus is uh, Y minus means the piston is accelerator. See, initially it will be in a, a zero, degree, zero degree. So once when it starts rotating, the piston is accelerator. Since it's accelerator, we will be uh, giving minus. If it's retarded means it's plus. So we have calculated the value. Next, we need to calculate trust in the connecting rod. So phi is the angle of inclination. 
phi is nothing but angle of inclination of connecting rod with the line of slope so we need to find this phi value so sin phi is equal to sin theta by n so theta we have calculated at 33 degree we calculated with a graphic graphical representation even we can also calculate with the help of your analytical formula so this is the formula for displacement so x we need to x we know 10 and radius we know theta value we need to find and n value we know if you actually here theta is the only unknown uh, sin c here uh, sin square theta so sin square theta can be written as 1 minus cos square theta the reason is convert everything into cos so that we can easily calculate that's the main purpose of converting trigonometrically so convert everything in terms of cos and reduce the uh, reduce the entire equation it will be getting an equation like this and we can easily calculate the theta with the help of calculator or else minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a and finally you'll be getting an uh, answer as 33.14 degree so theta is 33 degree so now so now substitute the value and determine the value for phi so next we need to calculate is uh, trust in the connecting rod so trust in the connect, connecting rod is fq is the force acting on the connecting rod so that is fq we need to calculate formula is fp by cos phi fp we already calculated here we calculated so phi we also know the value 7.82 so substitute the value and you will be getting the answer the third thing is reaction between piston and cylinder so coming back so reaction between piston and cylinder is nothing but uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, Fn, we need to calculate Fn. So that is the force which will be acting in the sides of the cylinder walls. So Fn, we need to calculate here. So Fn uh, formula is Fp tan phi. So Fp, we know, already we got, and phi value we know, we calculated. So if once uh, we can easily calculate the Fn value. The last thing is engine speed at which the above values will become zero. So we must, when the value will become zero, only when the inertia force on the reciprocating part is equal to the load on the piston. So when Fi equal to Fl means at that point, the above values will become zero. So let us consider omega 1 to be the speed at a particular point. It may be in radian per second. So Fi is equal to Fl. So Fi formula is this and Fl is load on the piston. So all the values we will be knowing except omega 1. We need to calculate omega 1. Omega 1 alone the unknown so keep omega 1 as it is and uh, keep the unknown on the one side and take everything to the right hand side it's a simple mathematical equation and finally you'll be getting the value uh, once you found omega 1 means it's very easy to calculate the speed because omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 so you know the omega so just cross multiply and determine the value of speed so next problem a vertical petrol engine having 100 mm so uh, here i am uh, having some disturbance yeah so a petrol engine having a diameter is 100 mm so we can convert into meter and the stroke is 120 mm so stroke means uh, stroke length so convert into meter and the connecting rod length is uh, 250 mm so l small is the, small l is the connecting rod length and capital l, l is stroke length so once you know the stroke length means we can easily calculate a crank radius because it's half of the stroke length. So the mass of the piston is 1.1 kg. So mass of the reciprocating part. The speed is 2000. So uh, once you know n means we can easily calculate omega. Then on the expansion stroke, the crank angle is 20 degree. Theta value they given from top dead center to bottom dead center. So since the vertical engine is top dead center to bottom, in previous problem, it's a horizontal engine. So gas pressure they have, they have given us P is equal to 700 kilo Newton meter square. So kilo Newton, so just convert into Newton per meter square into 10 power 3. So, so all values we have got, we need to determine the net force on the piston. So net force on the piston is piston effort and resultant load on the gajoin pin. So resultant load is nothing but we need to calculate the FQ value because the connecting rod force will be acting on the gajoin pin. So that value we need to calculate and uh, trust on the cylinder walls. So Fn we need to calculate speed above which other things remaining same, the gajoin pin load would be reversed. So once the gajoin pin load reverse means the FQ will be acting in the opposite direction. So we'll be seeing one by one. So it's very easy. So diagram they would be, they have given in the uh, question itself. So all the data is very clear. We have wrote all the data from the question. So we can directly move on to the problem. So first thing is net force on the piston. So determine the whatever force acting on the piston. CFL is net load. 
so p into pi by 4 d square pressure you know diameter you know so calculate so pressure they have uh, cal they have just substituted f 700 itself so you'll be getting in kilo newton so convert into newton so here we will be know n is equal to ratio of connecting rod to crank radius you will be getting n value next we need to calculate next uh, excuse me next we need to calculate the net force on the piston so fi is the inertia force fi is mass of the reciprocating part into acceleration so this is the formula substitute all the value you will be getting this value next for vertical engine this is the formula so fp is equal to piston effort fl is the net load on the piston minus fi is its accelerated from coming from top direction to bottom and plus wr wr we need to consider for vertical engines and this plus will be denoting the piston is moving from top dead center to bottom dead center so substitute all the value we will be getting the answer as 225 6.8 newton second thing is resultant load on gauge and pin resultant load is nothing but fq because the connecting rod uh, force will be acting right that is fq which will be acting on gauge and pin so phi is the angle of inclination of connecting rod to the line of stroke so phi value we can easily calculate sin phi is equal to sin theta by n theta you know n you know so just substitute fq formula is fp by cos phi phi value we just know calculated fp we already know piston effort so just uh, substitute all the given values and you will be getting the answer <coughs> next is so net load on uh, third thing is we need to calculate the thrust on the cylinder wall so cylinder walls are nothing but fn so you need to calculate fn so fn is equal to fp tan phi so fp is the piston effort and phi value we know so we can easily calculate the fourth thing is we need to calculate speed above which the gauge and pin load would be reversed in the direction so try to understand when can it be reversed only when fq becomes negative so fq is the load which will be acting on a connecting rod that is gauge and pin load that be, fq will be reversed means fq is the load acting on connecting rod so fq if it reverse so fq will be having a negative value this is possible only when fp is negative that is if the try to imagine only when the piston is moving in the away uh, opposite direction only it's possible when it can move the fp value will become negative only when fi inertia force must be greater than fl plus weight of the reciprocating part so only at that case fp value will be negative so the condition is if we want the gauge and pin load to be in a reversed i mean would be reversed in a direction means then fp should be negative fp is negative only when fi must be greater than fl plus wr so wr is the weight of the reciprocating part and fl is the net load acting on the piston so fi can be written as as it is so omega 1 keep as it is because omega on omega 1 we need to calculate so mr omega 1 this is the formula for inertia force it should be greater than Uh, load on the piston so 5500 we calculated see this is the force due to the gas pressure the load on the piston we calculated 5500 newton plus weight of the reciprocating part nothing but mass into gravity mass of the reciprocating part into gravity so among this you know all the values theta is 20 degree you know all the values except w except omega 1 so omega 1 alone is unknown so keep omega 1 alone on uh, on the left hand side and take everything to the right hand side so finally you will be getting as omega 1 should be greater than 273 radian per second so once you got omega 1 mean you can easily calculate the speed value because speed is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 so finally you will be getting the value as 2606 rpm this sum is very very important <coughs> so the third problem is third problem is also very simple the horizontal steam engine running at a speed of 120 rpm so convert into omega and having a diameter of 250 mm so d is equal to d converted to meter and stroke length is 400 mm so convert everything convert into meter so whatever data they are given converting it into meter the connecting rod length is 0.6 so small is small l is 0.6 meter mass of the reciprocating part 60 kg so mr 60 kg the angle that is uh, 45 degree from inner dead center so theta is equal to 45 degree and uh, there will be two pressure right uh, the steam pressure on the cover end side is 550 and crank end side is 70 so p1 and p2 value right in terms of newton uh, value they are given in kilo newton so convert into newton 10 power 3 if you put means you convert into newton uh, so p newton per meter square so p1 and p2 value we can write uh, diameter of the rod is 50 mm so convert into meter so we need to calculate the turning moment 
turning moment of the crankshaft that is t value rest on the bearings fb value acceleration of the flywheel alpha value with these th these three things we need to calculate for the third case they have given an additional data <coughs> the power is 20 kilowatt so these things will be using when we solve third case so first case is turning moment on the crankshaft that is t we t value we need to calculate so we know the area one area one is pi by 4 d square and small area since they have given the piston rod right so we need to calculate for the area of the piston rod pi by 4 d square so we will be having two different area so net load on the piston so net load on the piston this is the formula fl is the net load on the piston p1 a1 minus p2 a2 this a2 can be written as a1 minus a so these things i have clearly explained in the video for calculating the forces in ic engine so just have a look at that look at the video now i am directly substituting all the values we will be uh, finally you will be getting an answer so we know as <coughs> so we know that the ratio of length to length of connecting rod and crank n value we can easily calculate because l value we know radius crank radius we know next is inertia of force fi the form same formula substitute all the values you will be getting inertia of force value so piston effort is nothing but net load on the piston minus fi fi and fl you calculated so piston effort you will be getting an answer in terms of newton and kilo newton so finally determine phi value for, for substituting we need the phi value it's nothing but angle of inclination of connecting rod with the line of scope so sin phi is equal to sin theta by n theta and, and n value you know so phi value we can easily calculate finally torque value the torque formula this is the formula you know the theta value and phi value and fp we calculated here fp we calculated to so substitute as it is and you will be getting in terms of kilo newton meter and if you want means you can convert in newton meter also second thing is thrust on the bearing so fb value we formula we know so in this formula cal uh, substitute theta and phi value fp value we calculated so you will be getting in terms of kilo newton the third thing is acceleration of the flywheel for this alone they have given acceleration of flywheel power is 20 kilowatt and mass of the flywheel is 60 kg and radius of gyration k value is 0.6 meter so these data i have given data i have written clearly here so alpha is the acceleration of flywheel which we need to calculate so uh, basically we need to understand that there are two different torque one will be accelerating torque and another will be resisting torque so accelerating torque is nothing but i into alpha i is the mass moment of inertia of the flywheel so i is equal to mass moment of inertia which can be calculated with help of the help of the mass and radius of gyration so mass value we know radius of gyration value you know we can easily calculate the mass moment of inertia kg meter square next is uh, ta is the accelerating torque which is nothing but i into alpha alpha value we need to calculate that is nothing but acceleration of the flywheel so keep as it is next one is resisting torque tr is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 so we know the formula p is equal to 2 pi n by 60 so if you want the resisting torque take the 60 to the other side so 16 into p by 2 pi n we got from here so substitute all the value you will be getting a answer as 1591 newton meter we know that since the accelerating torque is equal to difference of torque on the crankshaft and the resisting torque that is nothing but ta accelerating torque will be equal to difference of crankshaft i mean uh, torque on the crankshaft and the resisting torque so t we know t value we just now calculated previously we calculated t value we got 3920 so substitute the t value and tr value we just now calculated so finally you will be getting ta as 2329 newton meter now uh, just equate equation 1 and equation 2 so that is nothing but here we are having uh, left hand side we are having same ta and ta is same so just equate the right hand side so 21.6 alpha is equal to 2329 so keep alpha to the left hand side and bring it to 21.26 downwards and finally you will be getting an answer as 107.8 radian per second square so these are the three basic problems and all the three problems are very important for while considering the forces which will be acting in the uh, reciprocating engine so in case if you are having any doubt mean type in the comment section please do subscribe to my channel mechanical motivator and press the bell icon then only you will be getting all the videos which i upload thanks for watching this video have a great day